Cool. I think we should just get started. So, hey, welcome along, everyone. Good morning. Um, thank you for coming along to this webinar for SolarWinds Media. My name is uh, Rainish, and I'm a sales engineer here at Soft Solutions. Um, I look after the SolarWinds MSP products. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be here with you guys today to talk about the SolarWinds RMM and EDR, Endpoint Detection and Response Integration. Um, the two companies have partnered together to bring you guys the next generation of antivirus. And um, yeah, it detects uh, malware and threats and uh, automates and responds in an automatic manner. With me here today, I've got Bob from uh, SolarWinds. He is a sales engineer who specializes in EDR, and uh, he's going to take you through a technical demo of the product and also answer any questions that you guys might have. So um, if you guys have any questions, please um, ask them on the, ch um, on the chat, and uh, we'll get to them and answering them at the end of the um, demo. Also, lastly from me, we've got um, four $25 gift station vouchers um, up for grabs. Um, I want you all to participate. So in the chat section, um, please, we're going to ask you an easy question from the um, webinar, from the demo. And uh, whoever, the first four people to get it right will get a uh, $25 gift station voucher. And uh, yeah, it's a limit to per company. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Bob, who's going to um, take you through a demo. Uh, Bob, you're on mute. Thanks, Ranish. Good morning, everyone. So, um, thanks a lot for inviting me to join this uh, webinar meeting today. Okay, so uh, I'm Bob, by the way, I'm one of the cell engineer in um, Senate Australia for SolarWind MSP. Okay, so um, what we're going to have a look today is going to be the newest um, uh, security offering from SolarWinds RMM. Okay, this is going to be the SolarWinds uh, EDR uh, and the underlying engine of this platform is the Sentinel one. Okay, so uh, some people uh, have heard about Sentinel one before, but some people may have not heard about it because actually Sentinel one is focusing the enterprise customer. They don't really come down to the MSP market. But right now, this is a good time that uh, we have this premium solution available for us. Okay, and something even better than that is um, recently the SolarWinds RMM just upgraded um, over the last weekend. So it is available for everyone in our region right now to get your hands on and go ahead and then start your trial today. Okay, um, uh, there aren't any other other uh, region around the world that they can trial EDR just only available in Australia and New Zealand only. Okay, so all other region will receive a trial next week. All right. So before we actually looking at the tech demo today, we first going to discuss about what is actually um, Sentinel One. What is the next gen AV? And um, if you already use the traditional AV, what are differences between those? Okay. And then uh, what about uh, the solution offering that we offer in the RMM? What do you have in terms of uh, feature sets? And then what do you have in terms of the integration? Okay, and then after that, we're gonna move along to the product demonstration. So I will show you how um, uh, the feature is going to look like. Okay, and then I'm going to do some kind of um, threat detection together so we can see in um, a real live example what happened when you click on when you click on something malicious and then you get yourself infected okay and then after that i will quickly show the rollback video as well okay because this platform definitely offering the rollback so we can talk about that later and then eventually at the end of the session we are going to cover uh, q and a but before we going down to Q&A, if you have any question that you would like to, to drop your question, you're welcome to use the, uh, the chat as well, and then we can cover that at the end of the sessions. Okay. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen, and then we're going to start talking about the Sentinel one. Yeah, 
All right, okay, so hopefully everyone can see my screen right now. Okay, um, just wanna confirm uh, if you can see my screen correctly then. If anyone can just, you know, put the chat as a yes or something, so at least I can see that um, everyone having no problem seeing my screen. Can you guys see it? Yes, Bob, I can see it. Okay, excellent. All right, cool. So the first thing is, what is next gen, next gen AV versus the traditional AV? The next gen AV, it first basically um, not going to rely on the definition updates, okay? So if we're talking about um, math, which is the bit defender or train micro or um, Kaspersky and a lot um, uh, a lot of common um, products out there they are relying on the definition updates okay so you need to make sure that you have the update regularly um, multiple times a day and uh, one disadvantage of this is there are a lot of threat out there right now that traditional AV cannot be used to protect that, such as the um, the malicious type that use file attack. They don't have any files. You you can't even detect the um, the definition from the files. Okay, so threats are evolving, and then that's why uh, you need the next gen AV to be able to detect that because next gen AV rather than using the uh, definition is going to use. Uh, different type of detection, such as is going to use the um, the machine learning and then the AI. So that is what we offering machine learning and AI detection. Okay, and then um, another important thing is the next gen AV do not need the device scan, so you don't have to worry about the um, quick scan and deep scan, okay? Because the next gen AV usually watch um, every process that happen on your device, okay? What that means to us is going to be the less resources used by the agent, okay? Because there is no scan, there is no spike of the memory, and uh, there is no spike of the CPU, okay? So in that case, the agent is gonna be a lot lighter, offer better um, protection, okay? And then um, uh, when the next gen AV detect any threat, it's going to record everything for you as well because um, once the threat start to trigger on your machine, there could be a lot of events, a lot of files, okay? Uh, the product is going to do the lock correlation and then start to uh, give you a map of what is happening with the PC, okay? It will show you all of the different process, all, all of the files. So you will be able to, to, to view um, how many files was infected, how many process was created. That is coming from the next gen AV, all right? So what about our SolarWinds EDR, the um, Sentinel one, what are we offering? Okay, so there are, there are uh, a number of EDR out there. Okay, but e, uh, SolarWinds EDR is basically uh, offering the detection and protection. Okay, usually the EDR platform only give you the ability to detect and then uh, give you the ability to uh, view all of the different type of locks. Okay, um, the traditional AV considering as EPP platform endpoint protection. Okay, EDR is endpoint protection and response. Okay, so um, I'm sorry, my bad. E EDR is endpoint detection and response. Okay, so in this case, SolarWinds EDR is combining the EDR and EPP all together. That is going to design to replace any of the existing AV that you are using. If you're using MAV at the moment, or if you're using any other antivirus, um, you can use EDR to totally replace those products. 
okay, if you wish to offer um, a premium uh, antivirus solution, then EDR is going to be the answer for you. Okay, so Solowinds EDR is going to uh, protect your machines, okay, from the RMM dashboard because we do have integration at the moment. And once we protect your machine, we are going to remediate as well. In terms of remediation, EDR offer repair. Repair works in a way that if the threat start to change your system files or alter your um, registry, EDR track those, and then it will be able to undo all of those changes for you with a, a, um, a single button, or you can include that action in your policy as well. So you can ha have complete um, automation, okay? And EDR also offer rollback, okay? And this rollback will allow you to um, uh, click on the rollback button, and whenever you get the ransomware encrypt your uh, customer system, you can click on the rollback, and then it will roll back the machine for you, okay? How do we do that? Is Sentinel One is uh, partnering with Microsoft, okay, and then uh, they are actually leveraging the shadow copy of VSS. Okay, yeah, uh, the product is going to back up the VSS every four hours. Okay, so you can make sure first that you need to enable the VSS on the end device. If you enable the VSS on the end device, then the EDR will be able to back it up every four hours. And then uh, it also protect your VSS as well, okay? In terms of protection, EDR put a wrapper on, uh, on top of the VSS. If the wrapper of the EDR detect any action that try to uh, remove or delete the VSS snapshot, EDR is going to respond to the uh, attackers that the VSS has been deleted successfully, but eventually the VSS still appear on the end machine. Okay, and that is the whole story of the um, uh, the the uh, the rollback. Okay. All right. So now, um, if we're talking about the protection. Okay, why the EDR is different to the other platform is we apply many different engine into the EDR agent. So the first engine that is going to, do, to, to use to protect your machine is going to be the um, reputation engine. Reputation engine, how, how it works is as soon as you get your files, into your machine, EDR agent is going to extract the files, looking at the attribute of the files and see how good and how bad the files is. Comparing with the reputation sources in the our cloud, we have about nine reputation sources. Okay, so uh, once we check with our reputation sources, then we will be able to block based on the reputation. However, this is not the underlying engine that EDR is actually using to detect your threat. EDR was built by the um, uh, the AI and the machine learning. So if you don't have the internet access or if your machine is off, uh, is not connected to the internet, your machine is still being protected by a different engine, which is an AI, okay? This AI hooks into the machine kernel, watch everything that happens. Every process that uh, created, it also have a score in our system, okay? So we will be able to see um, how good and how bad of the process, what does the process doing to your machine? And then it will be able to respond in a way that this is a suspicious action. This is uh, going to be the malicious action. And then it's going to stop that for you automatically. Okay. And then uh, remediation can start if it uh, actually changed your system files. Okay. And um, there are some other different types of engine that we're going to have a look as well when I do my, uh, my live demo. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to move along to the live demonstration. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at the integration first, right? If you see my screen over here, 
I'm looking at the SolarWinds RMM, okay? And in the SolarWinds RMM, give me one second. In the SolarWinds RMM, we have the new integration section on the left-hand side, okay? This integration section gives you the integration management, okay? EDR is our first product that we put in here. So later on in the future, if we have any other new integration with any other um, uh, different vendors, then you will be able to enable them from here. So if you wish to uh, trial EDR today, you can just get down to integration management and click on manage, and then you can start your trial today. So you get 30 days to trial it. All right. So as soon as you enable your trial, then you are going to get the endpoint detection and response dashboard, analyze policy and settings. Okay. What we're going to have a look first is we can have a look at the policy because this is where everything gonna get started. Okay. In terms of policy, we are going to apply a default policy that gives you enough um, protection to roll it out. So you can use the default policy as well, or you can create some something totally new. Uh, why you want to create your new policy is because of the exclusion. You may create a policy for your workstation and another policy can be a service because you have two different types of exclusion applied to it. Okay. So now we drill down into the um, uh, a policy and then we're looking at the default policy right now, okay? This policy, we would like to call this policy as protect detect, okay? We call it protect detect because any malicious threat, they are going to be protected. Queue quarantine are going to enable by default, okay? Suspicious threat, Okay, uh, we are just going to give you the alert only, so only detection mark, right? We are not going to execute any action because they, this could be something to do with fault positive as well. Okay, we will let you know first and then you can analyze the threat. If it is a real threat, then you can mark it as blacklist. Okay, or um, if it is a fault positive, you can simply add that into the exclusion easily, all right? And the next thing is the different detection engine that we use, okay? So the default one will be the reputation engines, okay? This is gonna check with the crowd uh, sources, okay? And then we have default inspection. Default inspection is the static AI that we have. So we can look how good and how bad the files is, okay, based on the AI, based on the machine learning. Okay, and then we also have all other different uh, detection engine for different type of purpose. For example, we have lateral movement. Okay, if you think about um, the uh, infected device from one machine in your network trying to infect another, uh, another device in the same network, we can detect that. Okay, and then the engine for fileless attack. So very commonly used by the malicious um, attack right now. Uh, they just have the inject code rather than they relying on the files. So definitely this is not something that can be tracked or can be detected easily by traditional AV, but we do have the engine to detect this specifically. Okay. Another one that we have that you can also turn on because it is not turned on by default is the interactive threat. Interactive threat is basically living off the land attack, okay? So living off the land attack is the attack that leverage whatever tools that you already have in your Windows operating system. It can be your um, command shell or it can be your power shell, okay? Any threat that trying to execute that, the, uh, the interactive threat will be able to detect it, okay? So these are all of the protection engine. Okay, let's come back to talk about the protect mode. At the moment, protect mode is kill and quarantine. Okay, so any malicious threat, kill and quarantine going to enable. Okay, kill is going to stop the process. Quarantine is going to 
encrypt that process and move to the quarantine uh, path. Okay, now we can include the remediate inside your policy. So rather than just queue and quarantine, we can remediate as well. So we can repair all of the changes. Okay, or you can also include rollback in your policy. But if you would like to uh, leave it as manual, you can. So all of these options, you can click manually as well. Okay, you can also leave the um, protect level to detect detect as well. If you just if you just would like to get the report of it, even though you get the report of uh, if some suspicious has been detected, you will be able to click kill and quarantine uh, manually as well. I will show you that in a uh, uh, later in the demo. Okay, so that is the protect level. The next one is the containment. Okay, this feature basically disconnect the infected machine from the network. So rather than you quarantine the, just the process, now we can quarantine the entire infected machine. Okay, so as soon as the machine is infected, if you have the containment enabled, then we are going to apply the firewall rules on the infected machine. And this firewall rule restrict all other communication for this machine to talk to any other uh, other machine in the network. Okay, this infected machine is still being able to control by the Sentinel One dashboard. So you will be able to send out uh, some some message to the end user that um, you are investigate this, and then. Um, you still be able to take some other action as well, okay, and then uh, such as kill quarantine, rollback, and so on. Okay, so containment will separate the infected machine from all other devices in the network to stop the spreading. Okay. Moving along over here, these are all of the agent configuration that enable for you automatically. Okay, we have scan new agent. So Sentinel-1 only do scan once. Okay, as soon as you install the agent, Sentinel-1 is going to scan your entire machine. Okay, and then after that, it's not going to scan your machine again. So we also mentioned that um, in this case, it's going to use less resource from your machine. I also have EDR on my computer as well. Okay, and if you would like to see how much CPU, how much memory is it is actually using, we can have a look at the actual agent. So if you look at the Sentinel-1 agent over here, CPU usually is going to go about 2%, but definitely depending on how many applications that you're running on. So EDR needs to watch all of those applications 24-7. Uh, so it can go to 6%, but it's not going to go uh, up so, so high. Okay. And in terms of memory, less than 2, less than two uh, 260 meg. Okay. And then it's going to go uh, constant in terms of the memory as well. So you're not going to see spike so much. Okay, so that's why we can say the agent is pretty lightweight. You can see the power usage is very low as well. It's very high, it has very low impact to your machine. All right, coming back here, I was talking about the scan new agent. Another important thing is the anti temper. Okay, anti temper is being used to protect your um, uh, EDR agent. So the common attack from the malicious um, uh, ma ma mal malicious attack is first, the virus is going to come to your machine, looking at the operating system, looking at uh, what is your um, current antivirus. So it will dive down into the, your WMI trying to obtain what antivirus that you are using. Okay. And then uh, a typical and uh, a typical attack right now is once it's get down to the to your WMI of your machine, uh, understand the antivirus and then they may decide to leave your machine if it if they know that this is uh, going to be the uh, engine that they will be able to de 
uh, they, they can be detected, okay? And then if they try to start to harm your machine first, they will try to stop the antivirus um, service, okay? And the second thing is it, it will, they, will find, they will try to find out uh, if you have a shadow copy enabled. If the shadow copy is enabled, the, the virus will try to delete it. Okay, so this anti-temper it basically used to protect against uh, those type of actions. So anti-temper is first going to protect your antivirus service. Okay, so no one will be able to stop the service. And the second thing of the anti uh, the second thing uh, that it that it do is is going to use to uh, stop anyone from un uninstall your antivirus as well. Okay, so no one will be able to uninstall the Sentinel one. Okay, Sentinel one can only be uninstalled from the RMM only. Okay, cool. All right, and that is basically the policy that you set up. Okay, but there are there are uh, a couple of things that you can include in your policy before you roll out as well. Okay, in terms of exclusion, we have five different exclusion. This is pretty standard, so um, I would like to really cover this um, very quickly so you can add the exclusion based on the hash. But um, the hash exclusion can be easily add when you mark uh, something as as exclude. Okay, if you get for any fault positive on any application, if you set up, if you click on exclude, okay, it's going to add into the hash exclusion for you. Okay, and then you can set up path exclu exclusion, um, a browser, any, uh, any type of browser, okay, Chrome, for example, okay, file type, and then you can also um, exclude based on the signer as well. Okay. Move along to the network control. EDR also has its own firewall. So you will be able to set up a firewall um, control from Sentinel-1 as well. If you set up the firewall control from Sentinel-1, then it's going to first disable your uh, current Windows firewall. And then you can have full control of the firewall uh, from the Sentinel one here, okay? So it's going to take over the window firewall and then uh, you can choose what type of uh, ports or protocols or application that you would like to um, block or allow. Okay, so this is the uh, firewall control. And then we also have device control as well. Device control can be used if you have any requirement to block a certain type of um, hardware devices. Maybe uh, you have requirement for your customer to block um, a USB for server. So you can apply this policy to the server to block USB, but for workstation, maybe you would like to block um, a Bluetooth because that is one of the biggest vulnerabilities. Okay, so give you an example here is you can set up the blacklist and whitelist for those type of device. Okay, so we can create a new rule that we are going to use to block USB. Okay, and then you can choose by the interface as well. So you can say you want to choose the interface to be USB or Bluetooth. Okay, and then after that, okay, you set up the rule type. Okay, if you say USB, uh, in the USB interface, there could be a number of different type of hardware. So that can be chosen from the device class over here. Okay, and then you can take an action to do your blacklist and whitelist. So in this case, we can say we are going to block it and then now you can select the device class that you would like to block. Okay, so in this case, I can block mass storage or I can go down to the USB-C type as well. Okay, you can block based on any vendor. Okay, or you can also block only specific um, uh, vendor that, that you would like to block. 
okay or you can do create your own whitelist to only allow specific vendor to be used okay that is going to give you another security layer okay now uh, once you have complete your policy the next thing is to apply your policy to the device okay if you wish to apply your policy to a group of the devices this will probably look quite familiar to you so we break it out to server and workstations okay you just select your customer that you would like to turn it on and then you can select the policy that you created and then that's it so that you click on save the EDI is going to download and install but one more thing is don't forget that it also require reboot as well okay all right okay um that is how you enable edr for multiple machines okay but if you would like to only enable for one single machine only you can simply just double click on the endpoint get down to edr turn it on for this device only and then select your policy okay so you can uh, uh leave it for five minutes for installation and then after that you can send a command to reboot the device okay whether you can reboot the device from here or reboot manually okay all right now once the edr has been deployed you can have a look at the dashboard okay okay before we looking at the dashboard i would like to show you that um we also apply the monitoring as well as soon as you enable the EDR. So let me show you how the monitoring is going to look like. Once the EDR is deployed, on the right hand side here, this is the icon of the endpoint detection response. So you can see how many devices that you enable. Okay, so we can go down to one of those devices and then the checks has um, applied for us automatically. So we have script check endpoint detection okay if you click on more information over here these are all of the different um, uh, uh, thing that we monitored okay the most important things is the infected status It's going to show you if your device is clean or if your device is infected let's say if your in the device is infected then this check is going to fail for you and then you will be able to receive an, an, an email alert if you configure your email alert or SMS alert. Okay, right. And that is one way that you can monitor the status of your machine. Another way is we're going to go back down to the dashboard. Okay, so you can view how many infected endpoint, okay, and so on. So um, this is also interactive dashboard as well. You can click over here and then you can jump straight into the endpoint, how many devices, right? Cool. Now let's have a look at what happened when something uh, suspicious has been detected. So I do have my, my machine that I would like to show you. So I'm going to remote to this machine. Okay. And for these machines, in terms of the policy, I leave it to the um, uh, detect, detect. Okay. So I don't execute queue and quarantine. Okay. I would like to show what happened if we don't take any action. We just use this to detect only. Okay. So now this is the end device, okay? And I have a number of different sample thread over here. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to execute one of them. All right, as soon as I execute it, now the end user can see the virus has been, uh, 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 something has been um, uh, detected, right? So you're gonna go back to your EDR.
Give me one second. I think um, probably the system just kicked me out. Let me try to lock back in. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you can drop your questions in the in the question box as well. Okay, and then we can um, review at the end of the sessions. All right, so. In the dashboard right now, you can see we have one. Oh, we have two, uh, not mitigated action, uh, not mitigated act, um, a device. Okay, and then one machine is infected, which is uh, my machine that I'm running the test right now. Okay, now I can get down to analyze. And then the latest one at the top over here, this is the one that uh, we detected. So we can also use the filter as well. You can see how many not mitigated, okay? And then you can also uh, see if you have already resolved that, is it true positive or fault, um, uh, fault positive? Okay, you can include more filter in there as well, such as the classification. So over here, you will be able to see um, how many ransomware that we detected, how many heuristic, um, how many of them that you have benign. Okay, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna go down to this detection that, 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 that we just did the testing. So we're gonna go down there. And now you can see the malicious action has been detected. So I can click here right now, and then we jump into the analyze section. Okay, in this analyze section, the first thing that is telling us is there are no action has been taken. Okay, but before I'm looking at the action, I would like to uh, look at some other information first. So the first thing is I can see who was using the machine. I, we also detect the user as well. So we can see which username was using the machine. And then um, if we have seen this one before, Okay, okay, so if we have seen this one before in the same network, it will give you the different uh, machine list and then it will show you which machine got infected first. Okay, and then it will show you the detection type. Okay, classification. Okay, and then the indicator. Why do we think that this is a real threat? So this is detected by the static engine, which is our AI, AI engine. Okay, basically this is the unknown uh, threat. Okay. If you click on explore over here, now it's also showing you that this threat has um, changed or create two process. Okay, it's starting from the WinZip. Okay, and then it also create the sub process over here. What this giving us is going to give us all of the events that is being detected, okay? So you know the path, okay? You know the path and then you can also look at the indicator, okay? If you scroll down here, it will give you the indicator. So this one, it actually trying to use the memory allocation, okay? And then if I go back to the first one, Okay, this one has 41 events involved in 35 different files, four network connection and two process. Okay. If you go down here, these are all different type of file that it actually trying to modify, it, create, you get the full entire path of the files. Okay. 
and then um, once you analyze the files you may would like to have a look at the process okay so they also create a sub process as well and then it also had network connections network connection we tracking the IP addresses okay so we can see that this is going to be the external IP address that is communicated with okay and you know what port they are using okay so this is the source port and the destination port the destination IP address if you're planning to um, strengthen your security then you can also um, configure your firewall to block these ports as well and this IP address that's why this um, the um, this platform is very different to traditional AV because it tracks all of these actions and then what you now can do is you can take an action to mitigate it okay so I can say I would like to queue quarantine and remediate now if I click on remediate queue and quarantine they are going to execute for me automatically so I can click over here I can select remediate so you can see queue and quarantine they are all selected and then I can mark as resolve and then I can say this is true positive this is actually a real threat you can also add additional node as well okay uh, if someone come come back to to have a look at this in the future in the future they can see what decision that you make why do you why you take this decision based on the node over here okay then once you apply you send this action to the device and shortly um, so you can see Q quarantine remit has been done now all of the changes are already repaired okay so if you come back in the dashboard over here we have successfully uh, mitigate the uh, infected device okay so it becomes clean again all right so one thing that I have not shown you is the ability to do a rollback okay um, if you get crypto locker um, you can also click on rollback as well and I do have a very short video that we can we can watch together okay so let me show you the video the rollback video over here So in terms of rollback, we have these victim machines going to uh, a website and get himself infected. Okay. Uh, in terms of policy, we leave the policy to detect, detect. Okay. We are not going to execute any action. So you can see now something has been detected okay and then if you wait then all of these files will be encrypted okay all right now you get crypto message okay all right now you're going to go back to the Sentinel one and then do the same that I just uh, did before. So you analyze the threat. Over here, I would like to pause. You can see Q quarantine, remediate, and rollback. They have not been executed. So this one, the UI looks a little bit different because we use the newer version. Okay, what we uh, what we looking at the video over here. This is the older version of the EDR. So before you take any action, make sure you analyze a text storyline, looking at how many files, how the threat is behaving, if it changed your registry, okay? And then when you are ready, you can click on rollback.
All right. And finally, all of our be rollback for you. All right. And that be basically the um, uh, the end of the live demonstration. So it's going to be now time for the Q and A. Okay. So yep, uh, we are ready to take the Q and A right now. Um, for me, I do not see any action. I'm not sure if we allow the partner to speak or um, if we just only take the question from the chat, but I won't be able to see the question from the chat. Maybe um, Renich, if you can. Yeah, so we've got here. one question, yep. quick question here from Joshua. I'll just read it out to you. Okay. So uh, what type of out of the box good practice policy bundles are available to allow us to get up and running quickly? Is there, is, is, oh yeah, go for it. Very good question, very good question. Okay, so let's go back and have a look at the policy. Okay. This is basically definitely depending on um, how serious uh, your customer would like to do, uh, uh, how serious your customer would like to, to, to have the machine protected, okay? But with the policy, um, pr protect the text is enough, okay? I would recommend you to include remediate in there. So it's going to uh, undo all of the changes for you automatically. But for the recommendation, if you wish to get the uh, the base protection of your machine, the first thing is you leave in to protect the tech uh, for about a week. Okay, make sure every device has run every application, detect any fault positive, you mark them as, as you, you mark them in the exclusion. Okay, now uh, if everything looks okay, now you can come back to the suspicious threat and turn into protect protect mode. Okay, so in this way, you're gonna get full protection, even from the suspicious threat. Okay, and this is the recommendation from us. Awesome. Uh, doesn't look like there's any more questions. Um, and Joshua says, thank you for answering the question. Um, See if it comes up in the next few seconds, or if it doesn't, then we'll just go on to the um, vouchers. Okay. Yep, all right, let's just go into the vouchers. Um, yeah, so there's, we're gonna ask an easy question, and in the chat area, if you can please type out the answer, um, we will um, take the first four that um, answer correctly. And uh, yeah, you can uh, win that about $25 gift station voucher. So the question is, um, clarify if I'm wrong, Bob, but um, with EDR, is there any other antivirus that you need to use with it or can EDR be used by itself? Like just as a yes or no, um, do you need another antivirus with EDR? So I can see two come through, three come through. So waiting for that last one. All right, there we go. So we've got Johnny. Uh, how do we extend this thing? We've got Johnny Blair Revel. Uh, Joshua Top and Anthony who have won. Cool, so we'll get those vouchers out through to you guys. And uh, thank you everyone for coming along. Um, if you have any follow-up questions um, and you want to get in touch regarding EDR, please email me at, um, oh the, uh, yeah, the, sorry the answer was no. And um, yeah, so Johnny Blair, Joshua and Anthony got it right. And um, yeah, we'll send those through out through to you guys. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming along. If there's any other questions that you guys have about EDR, um, please let me know. Uh, you can email me at rainish at softsoul.co.nz or give us a call and um, ask for me and we can discuss it further. But yeah, that's the end of our webinar. Thank you all for coming along. Thanks everyone.
Thanks, Bob. Thanks. Cheers. Bye, guys.